Welcome to the nonprofit show. We are so glad that you are spending your Monday with us. That's right. Yes, Monday. Yes. Because Friday gets all the fun and Monday gets all the bad rap. So we're going to switch that mindset and make it positive. So glad to have you here for another episode of the nonprofit show. Today, Julie and I are thrilled to have our guest in the hot seat, Laura Bullock. And she joins us as CEO and founder of Hope's Crossing. Laura's here to talk to us and you're going to meet her the nonprofit CEO, what it takes to lead women towards success. So stay with us. Uh, We have a couple of housekeeping items to take care of. But first of all, if you haven't met us yet, where the heck have you been? Just kidding. (laughs) Julia Patrick is here, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I say this all the time, but I'm so grateful, Julia, that you had this grandiose idea back in March of 2020 uh, to create this platform. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group, honored to serve alongside Julia day in and day out as the co-host of these episodes. So we've produced nearly 800 episodes coming up soon. Thanks to our amazing sponsors that allow us these unscripted opportunities. So a huge shout out. (laughs) The Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, as well as nonprofit tech talk. Again, thank you to these companies. They trusted us before we even quite knew what we were doing back in March of 2020, but many of us, many of them have actually been with us from the very beginning, and we're so grateful to have their ongoing support. And as I mentioned, so many episodes for you to go back and watch or rewatch or share. So you can find us on streaming broadcast platforms. You can find us on a podcast platform for those of you that are just purely auditory. And then the latest and greatest as Julia grabs her smartphone is you can download the app. So go ahead and queue up the nonprofit show wherever you choose to um absorb, I'm going to use that word, <laughs> all of this information because there's so much free content and it's it's really, really solid. So again, thank you for joining us today. Our guest, we are so glad to have you here, Laura. Again, for those of you watching and listening, Laura Bullock, CEO, founder, Hope's Crossing. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, start us off, if you would. First of all, I love the logo. It's beautiful. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Laura, and a little bit about Hope's Crossing. Wonderful. I can certainly do that. And first, let me just say that that logo was a design from my husband. He thought that he knew all things Hope's Crossing and all things Laura Bullock. And so he designed this and said, this is a representation of not only you, but the work you're going to do. So I, I often thank him for that. He's passed now, but um, the logo lives on and, and I love it and it works well. And it's really a nice brand and people tend to really um, resonate with it. Um, but a little bit about myself. I am a native Phoenician. I've been here uh, all my life, never left, um, and just absolutely love the Valley of the Sun. Um, But I have to admit that this year I've decided that this summer is just too much. And so I'm going to be uh, taking a page out of Jared's book and I'm going to find me a winter place to joy to to enjoy um but as it comes to hope's crossing um this has been a passion of mine for quite some time i've been really passionate about helping women become the best version of themselves for over 20 years and finally in 2010 um you know i was i was really not doing well medically and you know god has a way of putting you in a position where you can do nothing but listen to him And so I got strict orders that the project I was working on, that I needed to implement that. And that was Hope's Crossing. And so in 2010, I was very obedient and I launched um, Hope's Crossing, not really sure, you know, how this thing was going to be working and what I would be doing. And I just thought all the magic would happen organically. And we are we are serving women in um, the Valley of the Sun all women 18 years and older and helping them really become the best version of who they're designed to be. Wonderful. You know, it's a, an interesting thing to think about how we focus on one gender, um, yes. how we focus on maybe an age group or an ethnicity or environment. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that can be a hard sell, but talk to us about drilling down into this mission. You know, you as a founder, your founder story, I'm always fascinated by those. How did you narrow this down or, or did you, or how, what does that look like for figuring out what that mission is for Hope's Crossing? Well, you know, it, it was interesting because, first of all, I'm a woman, if you didn't know that. And so it, it can be an expert on me, right? I know all things me. And so I really felt that the things I experienced and the feelings I have, the the difficulties, the hardships, every woman has to have be having that similar experience at some degree. So I felt like women was my, that was my secret sauce. Like I knew that I can relate to that. I can comprehend it. I can translate it and therefore I can teach to it. Right. So that was really the, the, the idea around this narrow focus of women. But even more importantly, and I'm sure all the women listening will celebrate this with me, we really are the backbone to families yeah. and we're the backbone to communities. And if we are not whole and healthy, everything starts to crumble. And so I felt like being a woman, not only could I relate to them, but I knew how important it was for me and my family. And I know that that's the same experience that's happening with other families. And so women were key. And it was important that we are healthy emotionally and physically and mentally. But then there's skills that we need to have to ensure that our families can really operate and be contributing to a community. So that mission of women 18 years and older um, really struck me as the right place. But then even more of the experience that I was having. And there's a lot of women that I had been connecting with that had either been incarcerated or had direct connections and impactful connections to people that had been incarcerated. And so it was important to me that we deal with that issue, not just that they had been incarcerated, but what led them to that. And so that backstory is always the vital piece that we have to understand. And that was a, that was a journey that I, started, which is to really understand how do women get to this place? Because it's not just a natural thing for it to happen. There had to be some contributing factors and we had to make sure we understood those things to even be able to begin to help them. Wow. And that is so commendable. And, you know, I feel so fortunate, uh, Laura, because I've had the opportunity to learn about you, your organization, the services yes. that you provide. Um, it's definitely a niche audience. So I, I appreciate that. You talk about take 10 and begin. And I'm curious if you can tell us what that means, because that sounds like code for something. <laughs> It is code for something. Um, and, and, you know, it's interesting because, you know, you can take code and make it so scientific and it's, you know, and, and you, you're so strategic and, you know, you put all of this wonderful stuff in there, right? All of this fancy uh, corporate kind of stuff. But really, it is just you have to take a moment. You can say 10 minutes, 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 hours. But I, I think about 10 as a good number to really help us get everything under control. So if we're trying to slow our minds down because the mind is racing, 10 is a good number. If you're trying to connect with women to really, you know, settle in, 10 is a good number. And so take 10 and begin says, look, we know that there are so many things that are happening in your life right now. But when women come to our organization for support, first thing we do is we take 10 deep breaths nice. and we take them very slowly. We take them very intentionally and we take them very purposely, purposefully. And so take 10 is just that moment to say, I'm going to put everything else aside. It's all about me. And then we're going to start doing whatever work we're going to start doing. So take 10 and begin was really just a way for us to just settle everything in our, in our spirit, settle everything in our heart, settle everything in our minds, and then let's commit to this great work that we're going to be doing. And it's all about healing and transformation. And we can't do that if our minds are racing, our hearts are racing, our spirit is all up in a turmoil. Um, it's really important to, to do that. So take 10 and begin really started around how do we settle ourselves to get things going. 
I love that. And Julia, I'm going to put you on the spot because yeah. you taught me about the 10, 10, 10. And I feel I like what Laura just shared, <laughs> like it complements itself so well. Would you be willing to share that? It does. I and mean, so that's why I'm just like, oh my God, you're like my soulmate. Laura, right. Because I've been, I love it. and this is not my um, invention. Um, this came by the way of Susie Welsh, who was an uh, an, uh, an author, old, ultimately married Jack Welsh, the CEO, uh, very important CEO in American business. And she wrote a book called the 10, 10, 10 rule. And it's when mm. you're looking at an issue, a problem, a challenge, look at it in terms of the next, and you can do 10 week or 10 minutes, 10 weeks, 10 months. You can do 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years, whatever. Yes, but yes. If you look at this, this trajectory, you might have different answers. And mm -hmm. so what you're going to do and focus on in the next 10 weeks might be different in the next yes. 10 years, right? Or 10 yes, months. Yes, yes. So I love that you have this. Um, yes. Because especially in the nonprofit world, Jared, we talk about this a lot. There's so much duress. You know, duress meaning it's an immediate problem. I mean, we're in the right now. fire yeah. right now. And yes. so how do yes. you pull back and say, okay, lengthen that view. Fascinating. Really interesting. I mean, wow. I, I, and, can I, and can I just add to that, Julia? One of the, you're right. Everything is, is, such, is in such duress, but, and that's what these women are experiencing when they show up with us. Everything has to happen right now, right now, right now. Um, they have to get a job immediately. They have to, um, you know, get into counseling immediately. They have to get their kids back immediately. And nothing is going to happen that fast. And so for us, Take 10 and Begin is really helping these ladies understand it's not going to happen right now. And sometimes you have to prioritize yourself first in order to be effective at what you're trying to accomplish. And so that we we tell them to park the park the stress at the door, mm -hmm. park the sense of urgency at the door, because we're not going to fix it quickly. It didn't happen quickly, and it's not going to be fixed quickly. You know that's so honest, and and I've got to ask you another honest question, and sure. this is. You know, we asked the question, how do you build support for your nonprofit? But it's really code for how do you get white people that have no understanding or supposedly no understanding of incarceration and, and tend to think of it as these people did this to themselves. I'm not, I, I can help out in other areas for other things. How do you build engagement in your nonprofit for somebody who might not understand this and dare I say, needs to be re-educated. Like, how, sure. what does it look like? You know, um, you're absolutely right uh, when they think about it. And I always start out my conversation with people about our organization is this is not a sexy topic. topic. Yeah. It's not sexy. Yeah. It's not fun. It's yeah. not going to be happy dance. It's none of that. I'm going to pull on your heartstrings. I'm going to connect you to their stories and I'm going to help you see why these women deserve another opportunity to get it right. Um, if you think about, and, and it's not always about the outcome, which is prison is the outcome, right? Mm. You got to think about the journey. You got to think about how did they get here? And I love that Oprah Winfrey did, uh, wrote a book with a a doctor, and I can't remember his name right now, but the basic name of the book is, what happened to you? Mm. And so we, we, everything about what we do is really attaching ourselves to their story. Wow. So when I work with these individuals and work with these ladies and learn about their stories, those stories are what I use to connect to people. Because although these women have been in prison, they may have been, and I'm going to be honest with you, I have never seen so much childhood molestation in my life. Everybody can relate to that in some way. Um, it, 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 some type of abuse, whether it's verbal abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, there's been some type of rejection, abandonment. We those those words are not um, very specific to a population of people. Those are universal terms. We all know those emotions. We know those stories. We know those feelings. And so, when I'm trying to build support um, with community, I talk about those things that they can relate to, 
And oh yeah, by the way, it ended up for this person in prison, but it's not her story. You know, it's not her story. I can't heal her <laughs> prison stay, but what we can heal is all of those emotional impacts that they have. And I call it the seed of trauma. If we can look at the seed of trauma, what, what planted this traumatic experience for these individuals, that's how you make the connection. And so, as you can imagine, I do a lot of talking. I do a lot of outreach and community engagement. I'm doing a lot of panel conversations, these types of um, podcast shows and things like that to try to help people understand that prison is just the outcome. It's not It's not really the problem. The problem is that seed of trauma and we have to deal with the trauma. Yeah. And I feel like the incarceration is what has the stigma, right? And what I heard you say, Laura, is, you know, and, and I believe we all at some point in our life have a traumatic episode some of us have many more, right? Yes. It's really looking at our trauma score um, and how that shows up and impacts really everything that we do. Um, yeah. So working around maybe the stigma of the trauma course, if you will, taking mm -hmm. you know that individual into incarceration, yes. how do you garner support from the community? I mean, is it by telling these stories? It is by telling these stories. And, and I think, and you said something really important. We've all had trauma experiences. And it's not just that some have had more than others. It's that how did that trauma experience impact me? Right. Right. So if right. the if I had five trauma stories and you had 10, but those five were so impactful that I just could not withstand it, then it doesn't matter what our number is, it's the impact. And that's where, that's why I call it a seed because the seed can germinate into other things. But if you can't understand that seed, right? We all have a seed. All of us have a seed. We were born with something planted inside of us. And it's just, how do we, nurture that and allow that to manifest itself for us to become the people we're designed to be. And sometimes the seed is a healthy seed and sometimes it's not. And so it just depends. And we have to tell the stories of the women. And the other way I garner support is to show the success, mm -hmm. right? So we have these graduation ceremonies of women that have completed certain aspects of programming and we celebrate their success and we let them tell their story. And oh my God, is oh, it so cool. powerful at that point? Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that's extremely oh. powerful. Oh yes. Oh yes. So what about your donors, right? Like what are the donors searching for <laughs> with their donations? Uh, you know, I like to say what's in it for me, the with, with them, what's in it, you know, yeah. for them kind of thing. So we talk about often here on the nonprofit show, 1.8 million nonprofits registered in the U.S., right? Yes. So what yes. are donors searching for when they are donating to Hope's Crossing? You know, I think they're looking for those healing stories. I think they're looking for, well, they certainly want to make sure their dollars are being utilized um, in the most effective way. And it's, you know, and it's connecting to programs and all of that. But I think behind all of that, they want to see those success stories. Mm -hmm. They want to hear about my dollars. Yeah, it went to program and you were able to serve people. But what did those people do? How did my dollars impact who they have become? And I think, and that's why telling those stories are so important that, that this is where they started and this is where they are now. That journey, that, that healing journey is what I call it. it, it they have to see the outcome of, their, of those dollars. Um, it's, it, again, it's, it's great that we can you know, build housing for people and we can put people in housing. But if we don't give people the skills necessary to be successful in having independent living, then what's the point, right? So I'm sharing 
the outcome that the person has accomplished. This is the success you're going to see. So we're doing lots of little um, videos of the ladies in class and then graduation. Um, so the journey is what we're really telling the story about and showing the outcome of their dollars. And, how, and sometimes that outcome doesn't show up right away. That's the other hard part is it might be a year before you see the outcome. And so know that you're planting a seed. Again, it's that seed. You're planting a seed. You're investing investing in this person long-term and there you're going to see the outcome. We just have to keep telling the story and showing the journey at each leg of, of that, of that person's growth. You know, I have a follow-up question to that. Like how sure. are invested are you in educating your donors or potential donors into a world that they might not know about? Um, like how do you tell that impact with hope, and, and and also drill down a little bit to the scientific aspect or the you know the the more um, brass tacks of it the metrics and the data. So we're definitely keeping um, all kinds of measurements. Um, there's data captured every step of the way, of course, and we're sharing that data in newsletters and all types of events that we have going on. Um, and, and that data is, you know, pushed out through all throughout the community. We connect ourselves to other data points that are out there about the number of women in prison and are those numbers going up or down. We show the uh, recidivism rate of women in our program and how effective that program is. But we do it through a lot of events where we, again, tell the story. So we have an event coming up. And one of the things in this event is we talk about the young lady's little black dress story, mm -hmm. right? Because we all have a little black dress. Yeah. These women do not. So we're telling the story for these women to get to that little black dress, but we tell it inside of this campaign that we have called the Little Black Dress Initiative. And so everything is connected to those stories and the outcomes of these women and the journey that they're on. And those journeys, again, can be short for some, long for most, depending on how many traumas they've experienced and how impactful those traumas were. Um, and it's and it's just it's one of those things that you just have to keep telling the story plus showing the data and connecting all the points together. It's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so like, started, I, did it uh, Hope's Crossing uh, form in 2010? Was that the first year? Yes. OK. All right. Yes. And what so it's been like. every year, it's just been, you know, it's been a challenge, you know, nonprofit world, it's a challenge always, but um, we've been very blessed uh, to sustain ourselves, to keep connecting to people that are really invested in the work that we're doing and really passionate about, um, you know, the work and the impact of the work. And I think what happens is people really relate to these stories. And that's why these stories are so important. I had a young lady tell me the other day, you know, I was a single mom and I know how hard it is for single moms. So can I talk to you a little bit more later about what you do? And I said, absolutely. So they're connecting to those stories and they, and it relates and they're connect, they're really connecting and it's relative to them. And, and so um, that's the way that it happens. And it, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Wow. Laura, I'm curious, um, what does your next 12 months look like? Or maybe I should say 10, right? What is your next yeah, 10, 10 months 10, look like? 10, 10, right, 10. Well, <laughs> there's, there's lots of growth in our future. Um, it's already happening. Mm -hmm. um, because of all of the other contributing factors in the community, of course, with housing and homelessness and mm -hmm. um, women that are that are, you know, coming out of this COVID experience and all of the support they were getting through COVID that they're not going to be getting. So there's a lot of growth um, in our program and the women that we serve. And I think we're also looking at now expanding um, our programming because we're seeing a greater need that's not really being met right now. And, um, you know, we're, we're redesigning or working with a partner and designing some very specific financial literacy types of programming because it's not 
our traditional financial literacy for these young ladies. It's more than that. It's basic budgeting, basic money, basic, you know, expenses, money in, money out. It's the very basic uh, parts of financial literacy. And so we're looking, working with this partner to redesign something that they already have that is going to very be very specific to what the needs of, of our ladies are. So things like that where we're expanding programming, we're expanding the number of women we're seeing. Um, we love the space we're in. We're probably looking at um, building that out a little bit more so it's more specific and able to handle more volume um, and, and just really continue to serve. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think this has been amazing. I have loved, um, I've, I've loved sharing this time with you and I have learned so much and um, especially about your approach and in, in dealing yes. with a super topic, a super tough topic, you know, yes, but yes. it's not all, as they say, rainbows and unicorns. I mean, it's, you know, a tough thing and yet you yes, yes. forward and communicate that. And again, mm -hmm. with that name of hope, uh, it's brilliant. Laura Bullock, CEO and founder of Hope's Crossing. Check out hopescrossing.org and learn more about their work and, and the work um, that Laura does as well, because she has a very robust coaching and consulting uh, arm of, of her own personal business as well. And you can learn more about what she does as well. Really, Jared, don't you think this has been a great conversation to start the week? Yeah, especially as we celebrated Mother's Day this weekend, yeah. right? Like adding on to that, having the conversation of hope, right? For all yes, women, yes. I think is yes. really important. Yeah, it's been great. Really, really an interesting uh, dialogue. And, and you know, we're going to be watching you and, and hoping that you have continued success and, and really yeah. learning more from you. Again, everybody, you. I'm Julia Patrick. I've been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jared R. Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group. Again, we would not be here having these amazing conversations, which, by the way, I like to point this out every once in a while, Jared. You and I know this, but, you know, our sponsors, who most of them have been with us from the get-go, they do not exert any editorial control over us. So we have the ability and, and that we're very prideful of that, that, that this content that we deliver is of our own doing. So for good or for bad, <laughs> you know, but, you know, they don't exert pressure on us to only talk about a certain thing or with a certain group. That's of people. awesome. Yeah, yeah, really. It really is. That's and awesome. That's not always the case with sponsorship. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, our amazing sponsors include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out um, with just this really amazing broadcast like we've had today with Laura Bullock. Amazing, and I'm excited to start the week. Laura, thank you for You're very welcome. me. Yes, thank and, you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been... You're very welcome. Where were you yesterday, Laura? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a day late and a dollar short on this particular thing. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, if you didn't, if you weren't with us in the green room chatter, chatter, I confessed I was grumpy yesterday. And so <laughs> Laura needed to, to meet me about 24 hours ago, but that's yes. another story. We're all good. We're all reset because You're today reset. is Monday. <laughs> so, Monday. Yes. It's a brand new day. Yeah. Hey everybody, as right. every episode comes to a conclusion, we like to share our heartfelt thought and that is to stay well. So mm. you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Yes. Laura, thank That's you awesome. so much.